Hello, I would like to thank Dr. Prieto for the invitation to talk to you about the use of plastic penile models to evaluate penile curvature measuring techniques. I'm going to start with some basics of curvatures and then we will talk more about the models. If the penis consisted of two stray segments joined by a hinge and penile curvature was due to flexion at the hinge, then penile curvature could be estimated very reliably and reproducibly using a goniometer or a protractor. Different sizes of protractors or goniometers would work just as well with such a hinge penis, all having no problem showing the exact amount of curvature. On the other hand, if penile curvature came in the shape of a perfect arc, 30 degrees of curvature will look like this, 60 degrees will look like this, and 90 degrees will look like this. The curvature of an arc will be very difficult to estimate using a goniometer or a protractor. For example, would this angle be 20, 30, or 40? Where do you position the hinge of the goniometer or the protractor in relation to the penis to get an accurate measurement of the curvature of an arc? Actually, where you place the hinge of the goniometer in relation to the penis would vary with the angle in question. With the 30 degree arc, you place a hinge a little off the midline. For a 60 degree arc, you place the hinge right at the dorsum of the penis. And for a 90 degree arc, you need to be way off the penis. A more accurate way of measuring the curvature of an arc would be using different sizes of protractors. In the case of the 30 degree arc shown here, this protractor would be too small. This one is bigger, but it's still too small. That protractor is too big for that arc, and this protractor is the right size to measure that arc. To reiterate, in order to accurately measure the curvature of an arc, you would need a lot of different sizes protractors. That being said, this would be a problem that would be easily solved by using technology. Just using a protractor in PowerPoint that you can expand or contract will give you a near infinite number of sizes of protractors. In real life, however, penis curvature is likely neither a hinge nor an arc, but something in between. Some penises might come closer to a hinge and others to an arc. The same method of measurement will not work for both of these. A single protractor works perfect for the hinge one, but the arc one requires many protractors. If you want to use a goniometer to measure an arc type of curvature, the hinge of the goniometer will need to be positioned further away from the dorsum of the curvature as the curvature increases as shown here. Another observation is that subjectively, hinge type curvatures may appear more severe than the arc type of curvatures. Here are the 30, 60, and 90 degrees comparisons in between the hinge and the arc type of curvatures. There are three different ways to measure penal curvature. Visual inspection, use of a goniometer, or use of technology, app or software. We currently don't know the validity or reliability of any of these techniques at estimating penile curvature. Evaluating the reliability and validity of these measuring techniques in real patients is not possible because their curvatures are not known and it would not be practical or ethical to test the same curvature on different subjects at different days. To evaluate the reliability of a measuring technique, we need to start with a set of three-dimensional penal models with a known degree of curvature. Looking for someone who would help me print 3D models, I found Gabe Blink. He works at Children's Hospital Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Gabe initially created a set of 3D penal models with the hinge technique. These models were created in a few steps. First, he started with a straight penis, and the penis was divided at its half. The upper half was rotated, the angle requested. And lastly, the two halves were joined and the edges smooth at the breaking point. 
After he showed me these hinge type models, I asked Gabe to please try the models using the arc technique. These arc models were more straightforward to create. Subjectively, I thought the first set of models resembled more the real-life penal curvature that we encounter in hyperspace patients. So I asked Gabe to please print the 3D models based on the hinge technique. With these models, we conducted a study comparing visual estimations of curvature to goniometry estimations on 25 pediatric urologists attending the SPU conference in San Francisco a few years ago. Goniometry estimations were not better than visual estimations in that study. After that, we developed an app-based method to measure curvature by taking a picture of the curvature and then superimposing the picture to one of the graded images in an iterative fashion until a best match is encountered. This method turned out to be somewhat better than visual inspection and goniometry, despite the fact that the subjects measuring were not urologists, were mostly nurses. The real main takeaway from both of these studies was not that we, we should be using the app or not using a goniometer, but the main takeaway is the utility of plastic models at testing penile curvature measuring techniques. I always get asked how I use all these methods in clinical practice and the answer is that I don't use them. I make all my surgical decisions based on looking at the penis phenotype, a combination of factors like gland size, penile length, curvature, etc. I believe that accurate measurements of penile curvature are important only for research at the moment. Going forward, I believe that the only reliable method to measure penal curvature will come from an app due to the complexities of measuring penal curvature. Thank you very much.